in this uh, section we'll talk about uh, the other factor which is essential for photosynthesis that is light now there are various things which we need to know about light as a factor which is essential for photosynthesis first is the quality and when we are talking of quality we actually mean which wavelength is essential and as we have already discussed the various types of pigments different pigments absorb different wavelengths and that is why we call one main pigment that is chlorophyll a as the reaction center chlorophyll and other pigments which absorb other wavelengths as accessory pigments so to understand which pigment absorbs which particular wavelength there is one important thing that is known as absorption spectrum this is going to help us understand which pigment absorbs which wavelength absorption spectrum is obtained using spectrophotometer spectrophotometer to study which wavelength is absorbed by which pigment we get a graph and the graph shows various pigments absorbing different wavelengths so it starts from 400 nanometers to 700 nanometers we are talking about Vibgeor that is the visible light broken into seven colors that is the spectrum we are talking about so let us write 500 here, 600 nanometers. And we will use three different colors to show the absorption of different pigments. Black we are using for chlorophyll A. So it was found out that chlorophyll A gave a graph where two peaks were obtained. One peak was if we write this as V I B G Y O R, then one peak was in the blue region and the other one was in the red region. This indicates this is chlorophyll A, the black line we have drawn here. We'll use another color for other pigment. So this shows that chlorophyll A absorbs maximum blue and red wavelengths. Now let us take this one red line for chlorophyll B. There's a slight difference. Chlorophyll B absorbs in between, closer to blue-green region and again near the red region. So there is a slight shift in the wavelength. The third pigment which we want to discuss are carotenoids. And carotenoids showed a graph where the absorption is somewhere here in this in this region that means it absorbs somewhere near green and yellow region let us take one more this is for phycobilins and phycobilins showed a graph which was showing a peak again in the green yellow region so this graph actually tells us which pigment is absorbing which particular wavelength. So now when we are talking of quality of the light, which wavelength is essential for A and B, the blue wavelength and the red, that is in the, these colors is very important because here they absorb maximum. And if absorption is maximum, that is the time when photosynthesis should be maximum. So that interpretation was represented as action spectrum. If absorption is taking place in this region, there should be more action. And this was determined by the experiment done by Engelman. The experiment was very simple. A green alga was taken and this green alga was exposed 
let us draw these algae like this in aquatic media and these algae were exposed to different wavelengths same the visible light broken into the spectrum so these are the seven colors and this area was uh, exposed by violet then indigo blue green yellow orange and red if we have to believe what exactly is this graph showing that maximum absorption is taking place in blue and red region so what he observed was that in the blue region there were many bubbles seen and similarly in the red region also bubbles were seen and these bubbles were produced as a result of a reaction which was taking place now we know that the reaction is photosynthesis in which oxygen is given out as byproduct so if these bubbles this is of oxygen so if more oxygen is liberated that means the rate of photosynthesis is high and it was observed in two regions those regions were one blue and other red region in other areas also few bubbles were seen but that was not very significant maximum was in the blue band and red band this indicates that maximum reaction or that process took place in these two zones or these two color bands if we have to draw a graph showing this action spectrum then the graph would look like this again the wavelengths are going to be 400 to 700 nanometers and the graph is or rather it was obtained as a peak here and another peak here so if we superimpose this on the action uh, sorry the action spectrum graph on the absorption spectrum then if we just place it here near this there is a peak again there is a peak so this dotted line is actually showing us the action spectrum now if we see this we can easily conclude that this was the band where maximum wavelength was absorbed and as maximum wavelength was absorbed here more action could be done if we change the word action with photosynthesis wherever more wavelength is absorbed or more light energy is absorbed more photosynthesis is taking place so if we superimpose the action spectrum on the absorption spectrum we understand that in these two bands that is the blue band and the red band maximum photosynthesis is taking place and this is the band where maximum absorption is done by chlorophyll a and then by chlorophyll b so these two things have helped us understand or conclude that chlorophyll a is the main uh, chlorophyll and that is why we are calling it the reaction center chlorophyll so when we talk of light as a factor we require the visible light and in the visible light when this was broken up into its spectrum all seven colors it was found out that out of all these seven colors or wavelengths two are the ones which are maximum absorbed and the pigment which is responsible for absorption of this is mainly chlorophyll a followed by other pigments they also absorb wavelengths different wavelengths but maximum is by a and that is in blue and red so this helps us understand which quality of light is essential and now we will talk about the photosystems and before photosystems we will take up immersion effect